we are almost there. Super simple day. It hasn't been uh, any problems yet. We got four minutes left. So unless something happens for the next four minutes. So we're dropping again at the Linden Ave in New Jersey. We're gonna drop these three cars. I'm gonna try to find something back because I didn't get any responses uh, from this, this company about hauling anything else for them. So I'm gonna try to find something on the way back. I did see a Harrisburg load, but it was like, it said enclosed, which is, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'll still call on it. But a lot of these brokers are smoking crack with these cars. Uh, there's no profit for a lot of these loads. So it does not make sense to run, just to run. Just So if anybody's wondering, if there isn't shit out there, it's honestly sometimes better just to sit at home or go find something else. No problem with that. You know, as long as you keep up with the insurance payment, you're not gonna close your company down or whatever. Straight video, if you guys watched it, I started messing with the tuning on the 12 out. We were getting about 12.7 fully loaded and half and half I'd say about. I had the fuel, the pre-boost screw all the way in and the star wheel all the way up, mainly because when I did the turbo swap up, the turbo was just not lighting. So I started throwing a bunch of fuel at it and it really upped the response of the truck. But the problem is I tuned it on waste oil. So I'm realizing now that if you're gonna run waste oil, you have to dump more fuel, but if you go back to diesel, it's gonna smoke black. Pretty much how we're gonna do it is I'm going to tune the pre-boost first. It does feel a little bit sluggish now down below 10 PSI because I did that. So we know we made progress. It was re super responsive. And then now it's just not responsive at all. So what that tells me is that it does need a little bit of pre-boost. I backed it all the way off. So I will add a smidgen. I'm gonna add a tiny bit because that ultimately will affect your fuel mileage in idle. So if you're idling a lot with a fuel screw, with the pre-boost, smoke screw, whatever you want to call it, if it's in all the way, it's going to smoke a ton. And it's also going to get you piss poor fuel mileage if you're idling a lot. So like I said, we're going to take care of that. I'll add a little bit more, but I'm not going to add an insane amount. And then once we get the pre-boost perfect, then I can start working on the mid-range and the top. So I need to start messing with the star wheel again, because right now it's at the point where the rate comes on fast. So there's smoke, it cleans up, and then it smokes a shitload up top, which is weird. Usually it smokes down below, but this is the opposite. I have no smoke at all down below now. I could lug the engine at like 500 RPMs floored and it wouldn't smoke at all. All right, so I called ahead yesterday and they told me I was good to be here at 8 a.m. You guys can see we got one, two, three, it looks like four trucks in front of us. One's a dry van, so I don't know what his deal is, but we got a couple hot shots and a, actually two semis and a hot shot. I don't know what this guy's doing, but we'll get these things dropped here. Uh, a lot of good suggestions you guys gave me for this guy here. So I'm going to try to do some of those suggestions about getting like a middle bar, something that this can ride along, something to realize here. You guys see this is half inch cable. I went with way too thick of a cable, honestly. Three eighths would have been perfect, which is what the factory size was. So 92 feet is great unless you have it as a half an inch. Because a half an inch is rated at 32,000 pounds, but the 3 8 was rated at 25, I think it was. So a real, I could have went with it, but I wanted three, uh, the half inch just to be safe. Also, look at that nice exhaust tip tucked up under there. Not sticking out anymore, if you guys look. Barely, barely any stick out. I think that's perfect. Maybe tuck it in a little bit more at some point, but I think it's got fine. I will definitely, it, it want, I wanna see how these cables hold up. Cause a lot of guys said, you know, there's really only one advantage to this cable I can see. And that's that if it ever snaps, it doesn't kill somebody. Whereas like with a standard cable, they snap and they'll take your head off. I ordered the new pieces so I can get rid of this concoction right here and then we'll just and there's plenty of leeway down here so I can bring these wires up a little bit they're gonna bolt right to the frame two little junctions I'd say one in coming from the top and then two outs I need to verify that there's a catalytic converter on this thing uh, yep there is See that little orange wire so I'm gonna get these unstrapped real quick get the winch going and we'll go from there everything is good something else I won't see people doing with a uh, regular rope a regular winch cable I can, free, I can free spool this rather than hooking power up to it. I can pull this back myself to get uh, this cable wrapped back up. Whereas with a uh, steel cable, you would never do that. But yep, we're loading on the side of the road again, by the way. Now it's funny, even though it's like not the tightest thing in the world, it's still pretty tight for what it is. 
and I did that by hand as opposed to uh, the other thing. I think I got, you guys see this protector sleeve? Looking for one that's like long enough to go the entire cable. At some point when we go with 3 8 if I do, if this cable's strong enough and it is reliable, I'm gonna order one that's the whole length in like half an inch, but with a 3 8 cable and just wrap the whole thing in it so that the spool will just stay like that. So I think it'll work out fine. Sketchy. Forgot to put myself on duty on the logbook, so I need to come back here. I got here at 8.15. So like yesterday the guy told me to be here at like 8.15 is generally when they open. I said I'd be here at eight, which is, you know, whatever. But it looks like they don't even have it. I don't know if they got anything going. There's people down there doing something. But if you guys can see, I said yesterday about how they put cars in the front like that. So they're not actually open yet. So what I'm gonna do is take all of the paperwork and put it in each one of the cars like it's supposed to. Because that's what they tell you to do here. And luckily with the Copart app, they give you a BOL here. And the Copart app tells me which car has titles and which ones don't. So this one is, this one's a blue Prius. There's a title for it. Cool. And it tells me which ones have keys. Now I know they all have keys because we used them all. Here's the Nissan. Nissan has a title and whatnot, so we'll throw that in there. Uh, yep, Toyota RAV4, so there's the title. And then this one here, throw in. Like I said, everything is all taken care of. Should have thrown that in the park, but whatever. E-brake was on strong enough. I had the winch cable on it too, so I wasn't super worried about it. There's a wire harness, something. But yeah, so they're gonna give me a BOL. I'm gonna need to fill it out. Uh, does it have keys? What's the VIN number? What's this and that? Yada yada. Um, you guys can see we got a little bit more oil leaks on it. I went through and literally fixed every single oil leak on this thing. I understand that the front main that we used was kind of, was an AutoZone one and it was kind of shitty. So it is spraying oil everywhere from at least that and I'm wondering if it's pushing its way back. But the P-Pump is leaking a little bit out of the fuel shutoff and the engine at this point, it's like I really do want to kind of replace it. So if anybody has any 12 valve engines with a P-Pump for around two grand, uh, around 200,000 miles, let me know. Something that at least runs. I don't want a piece of shit motor because that's literally the only gripe left with it I'm seeing is once we get a good engine back in it, we get a paint job on it, everything's good. I would like to get a cow hood at some point. I've never really messed with this because it seems to bother a lot of people, so I've kind of like left it alone, but I would like to get a cow hood at some point. Guy up there just bullshitting with him. He said it costs 11, 1200 bucks every time he fills his tank, which isn't insanely bad, I guess, for a semi, but he uh, he said he's home every day too with a, I think he has six, four on top, three on the bottom, so seven cars, which isn't too bad. Good for him. Make it work. All that. Earl. And it's windy, but it's nice out. Like I am kind of sweating a little bit with the humidity. All right, so I don't know how this is gonna come out because you guys can see here. So I found, like, I was like, oh, hey, here's a good load. Mechanicsburg, PA, West Long Beach. So if I were to go and view the route, wait for it to load, you guys can see here. Oh, look at that, 182 miles, right? Toll, and then where I'm at right now, let's see, one, Linden Drive in Jersey. Look at that, you know, I could shoot down. It's only, what is that? I gotta go 50 minutes south, and then I hop on the turnpike, right? It would pay for that. But then you come down here and you look at this little guy right here. Three picks, one drop. Wow, a broker that was actually paying really well, I knew it was too good to be true. Three picks, one drop. Nobody's nobody's gonna move three cars, three picks, three drops for 367. Like that's just absolutely insanely cheap. No one's gonna do that, especially in New Jersey. If somebody grabs that, I would be so disappointed. But this is exactly, I'm in Jersey City right now and you guys can pretty much see like I decided to put 50, let's just, for shits and giggles, let's put 75 miles from Jersey City, right? Freightliner Cascadia, 800 bucks, paying 225 a mile. That is absolute trash. Three picks, one drop, 675, 367 a mile, trash. Uh, here's two vehicles going from Elizabeth, New Jersey to State College. Let's see, what are these? What are these? Volkswagen and BMW, whatever. You know, they're paying $1.28 a mile, that's two, 56 absolute trash like 
I don't understand how people are making money with it. Like, it's up in State College, which ruins it for me. If it was like Mechanicsburg, whatever. But you can see Jersey City, New Jersey. Look, it's literally up the road from me, but then State College, I-80. Let's see, let's... If I were to grab that, I'm right here, I pick this up, I'd go I-80, drop off, and then come home. That would add six hours, and there's tolls on that route. So, absolute trash. Not taking that one either. Absolute trash. Email for load. No. 2020 Lexus in op. 200. Wait, how many how many vehicles is there? Unspecified. It's paying 231 a mile. Okay, 580 bucks. Okay, that one's not as bad, but that's up in Connecticut as well. But 580 bucks. Like that's only one car. Like that. Okay, that's kind of fair for just one car. Like that. Okay, one 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 car. If it was three. That would put you at like 1700 bucks somewhere around there. Uh, Ford Taurus, 467 miles, they wanna pay 525. Smoke and crack, GMC Acadia. Like you guys get the point, like these rates are absolute trash out here. So you can't blame people for not running. Anybody running these needs to just close their doors. I would close my door, like I would quit long before I take this cheap stuff because not only am I taking the cheap stuff and hurting myself, I'm hurting other people because if there's a guy out there that's gonna take it for that cheap, then they're gonna keep posting it for that cheap. Rates can't go up until we fix the problem. And I've made my stand. I'm losing a lot of money by not running, but at the same time, it's gonna cost me a shitload of money to run these cheap rates, and I'm gonna have to run way harder. Well, generally my search here, you guys can see like, this is what I try to shoot for, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, New Jersey, Maryland, Delaware. I don't do New York, and then same thing. So this is what I try to pick up. Obviously can't do the Caterpillar. I think that's the one that you guys said, yeah, can't do that, but there was a school bus that was like in there too that I could have done. Like this wheel loader here, I wonder what this weighs. 66, okay, yeah, I couldn't do that either. That's 66,000 pounds. You guys, I'll even show you what the images are. It's one of these, yeah, I definitely couldn't do that. So those two out of the picture, but three Subaru Legacies. Why is it 351 miles? What's the what's the view route? Let's see what's going on here. We're just, oh yeah, that's shitty. Yeah, because then you have to dead head all the way up here to like Allegheny National Forest. Yeah, getting a little better, but just not my area. Erie to Philly, like a lot of deadhead to get up there. Toll roads, um, F450 going from, let's see, it's 270 or 274 a mile, but it's 465 miles. Jesus, that's all the way in the, like right by Ohio right there. I figured I'd at least show you guys like what's going on. Like this one here, if I had an enclosed, I'd take this all day. Three Chevy Corvettes, like 1200 bucks to go back to Harrisburg. Look at this, West Mifflin. Oh, now we're finding West Mifflin. Who's posting that? Raz, never heard of them. But 1100 bucks to go from West Mifflin to New Jersey. I used to run those routes for that same price, 12,000 to 1200 bucks. So it was like three dollars and three cents a mile back when fuel was three dollars three fifty a gallon. Now that it's like six bucks, there's maybe two three hundred dollars profit here. And to me, that doesn't make sense. Like there's just no profit in it unless you take something out there first. And even then, it's like ninety five cents a mile per car. No, that's that's terrible. I, I think at minimal cars should. One speci one car, I think, should definitely pay $1.20 a mile for just one car. I think that should be a base minimal rate. But I, I am going to call on this one and about signed contract, ready to go COD. I'm going to call on this one because if you guys look, even though it says it needs an enclosed, I've done Corvettes before. Like, that's all the way down there. Let me let me see here. Let me, let me see something. Jersey City. I'm going to have to think about that one. Go right through Philly. Take the toll road up. Because let's see, from Jersey City, let's just cut this out in general. Let's say Jersey City to there in general. I'm going to drive, what, two hours? I doubt that's two hours. Probably, what, an hour and a half? Come on. What do you mean you can't? Bruh. One. I'm going to cut this off here in a little bit because it's getting kind of long. Look at that. Okay. Two hours. Two hours to get down there, okay? All right, well, he didn't want to, he said for like a non-enclosed price, I was like, I mean, I get it. So it's like, I, I mean, I could have run it for like 900 and that was my bottom dollar on it, but they said, yeah, we'll just, 
I understand the customer wasn't super hard pressed on getting done, which, it, you know, it never hurts to ask, you know, always ask. It also never hurts to ask for more money. Um, if you absolutely need a load and you got to take it, it is what it is. But if you are not hard pressed on loads, definitely try to ask for more money. Start pushing on these things and feel free to turn loads down that you call on even. Like if you know that you have a bottom dollar, don't take it for what their price is. If you can get them up a little bit, try. All right, so we got all the paperwork again. And one of these has a title, I think, unless that's like a certified, oh, that's a certificate of salvage. Okay, I thought it had a title. Uh, let's see, we have a, come on, of course it's in the damn middle. Blue, Toyota Prius. Toyota Prius. We have a Nissan Sentra. Throw that in there, right on the floor. Let's see. This one has a certificate of salvage. I don't know if that's a title or whatnot. I don't know, no idea. Um, Cause Copart says no title on any of them, except one. This one here is pending title. And I didn't get shit, so literally, yeah, pen, title pending. So, bada bing, bada boom. All good. Now we can just sit and wait. And still haven't found any loads yet. Oh, them junk cars. Sick. Oh, they're getting the car haulers unloaded now. Just got all the paperwork is in. Everything's unstrapped. We have taken our after pictures. Everything's done. I just need to mark everything paid. I need to mark my logbook and send them a picture of the BOL and we are good. All right, so I did a thing. I, I caught on that load, the 675 one from New Jersey. It was three picks, one drop. And I was like, man. You know, I was like, can we do any better on the rate? I asked them where everything's at so I could shoot down. It's about, I forget what the actual, I forget. I, I can't believe that I got rid of it. Um, I might have to go back. I was able to save it, okay? Jersey City, down to Long Branch, down to Howard, Howell Township, and then Bordenton, and then drop in Mechanicsburg and go home, right? So they wanted, sorry, I can, I'm not screen recording it, but 675 is what they wanted. I told them to be able to do it because he was like, well, you know, 700, 725 make any difference. And I'm like, well, you said you have someone else to do it. I said, I mean, with the fuel prices, I'm like, I, I may just have to pass. And he's well, like, well, how's 750 sound? And I was like, I mean, you know, eh, I don't know. That's, and that's how I told him. I'm like, man, I mean, I don't know. I'm looking at the numbers. He's like, what do, what do we got, you know, for you to run it? And I told him, I said, I wanted 800 bucks. It's 184 miles, so 800 bucks for three cars. So I drop down, pick, going the same direction, pick again, going the same direction, pick again. That's the plan. So today is gonna be super hectic because I was supposed to get Liam at four, but uh, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a hard hard day to. We'll see if I can still manage it, but I want to drop in Mechanicsburg sometime today as well. So if I have to go get Liam and then come back, whatever. But we're definitely. If I can get this, we'd send them over the COI and everything. Hopefully no disappointment, but always negotiate. I wasn't gonna do it for 675, hell no. Because after 20%, I'd only get 540 of that. Nah. Um, so 800, my, you know, 800 bucks is what I wanted. All right, about to get unloaded. He has a couple cars left. I think he's got like two or three. But the other guy beat me to the certificate of insurance, so he got the other load. But we also found another car that's closer and goes to Mechanicsburg at the same time. So rather than getting three cars for 800, we got one for three, and he offered it for 175. So I was able to come up a lot on the price, which pretty much covers my fuel and tolls and everything on the way home. Nothing insane, but again, don't just take bullshit. This will get me home. It's pretty simple. So I, I got him up almost double on the rate. I wanted 350, but we settled on 300. Honestly, uh, I'm going to start negotiating with every car now knowing that I can. It, and after seeing everybody's stuff, a lot of times cars will not negotiate. Brokers just won't. So brokers need to learn to bring their prices up as well and start telling these customers, we got cheap brokers. We got cheap drivers that'll run the stuff. Don't do that. It's a good way to be selling your equipment in six months. Yo, they got trains. Look at this dude, he's sitting there waiting. He's waiting. I really gotta start charging detention pay on this shit. I don't think it's been long enough to do that yet, but I've been here, you guys can see, since 8.15.
and it is now 10:37. So I've been here two and a half hours now. By the time the three-hour mark hits, we'll be we'll be dropped off. But I'm definitely gonna have to let these people know if I'm ever doing this again. I'm charging them by the hour because we do a lot of work for these guys. So I'm gonna charge them by the hour from now on, and I'm going to tell them that before we take the loads. This is the second. It took I think it was like two hours and two and a half hours yesterday. So or uh, Wednesday, I mean. Well, now we got it. So the guy in front of him was smart. I was talking with him for a while. He actually unstrapped all of his cars before he actually pulled up. So hopefully today they can get me out pretty quick after I pull up. And we can start heading down there. Yo, I thought that was his last car. And he still has another one. Damn it. <laughs> Dude, when I just when I thought he was done again, he pulls a car out and there's another car. Yo, these seven car haulers are no joke. And there's more behind me. I think he's got a four or five. I don't know. Oh, look, another train. This is the first, this is my fourth or fifth time here and I've never seen a train come through here. Gnarly. I think it got a little better than yesterday. Could have been back a little further, but I think it's good. See, five car on a 5,500. I think that's a 5,500. See, and do it. Look at that. They're so busy, and they got one forklift today. Oh man, I do like that that setup though. You can see one, two, three, four, five cars on a 5500, and then nice Peterbilt back there. Looks like a newer one. Definitely a newer one. Beautiful truck. This guy in, in any fucking hurry, but. Wish I could get this thing to sit this low normally. I tried 60 pounds today instead of 70, and it looks like it's sitting a little bit better. So I think 65 will be a nice even spot. Like right at the end there. It looks like there's got, oh, I guess you can make a U-turn there. I didn't even see that. I might have to try that at some point. Finally getting cars off. Looks like he's got it. A day. Yeah, it's just got to avoid that winch cable is all. It seems like he's got it. It's a sketchy spot because if he puts them out too far and hits a car, it could get interesting. Might have to move back a little bit. Move back for him a little bit. I need to get better at figuring out where to park on this one, but... Cool. Suspension didn't seem to care at all. Still stayed the same amount. Make it a little quicker. <laughs> Alright, I got all my stuff done, so I'm good to go then. You don't need anything from me? Did I sign? Nah, you're good. I got everything, yeah. Last one, now we get out of here. Catalytic converter is up there. Yeah, you're good. Well, the broker was nice enough to send over the address to pick it up, but couldn't send me over any of the other information until we send over the COI. So we're just waiting on that. I can pick up GMC Cicadia something. Definitely not gonna be able to get Liam on time, but whatever. Uh, I would have an extra three hours had they dropped when they were supposed to they said we can start i guess as long as they know about it we can start unloading cars there ourselves as long but obviously those three that i had didn't run but they said that yeah that was as long as they know about it they can do it so the toyota i couldn't uh the toyota and the uh nissan i probably could have gotten but the prius definitely did not there she is picking this one up Going back to mechanics, we're going home. 153, 309, absolutely, here she is. Hopefully runs and drives, but we'll see. Let's get in this thing, let's start taking our pictures. Pennsylvania. Let's see if she starts. 
Wow, see, I was thinking it was an in op because it said no keys. Uh, wow, 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 what is... Y'all make this way too complicated. There is no reason for that. You going down the highway, one of your kids reaches up and throws that sh in there. No, thank you. So, we'll, uh, we're gonna load it without the ramps because we don't need ramps. Figure we can just drive up on there. It'll should just scratch the bumper a little bit. I think we'll be all right. Thing has 46,000 miles. I hate that. <laughs> I hate that. There you go. I think we're centered up. Oh, look, there's a button for park. You imagine going down the highway, you gotta like do something, you accidentally hit the park button. That'd be some shit, right? All right, heading off to Mechanicsburg. Here she is. She's all strapped down. Winch cable's all good, all that stuff's put back. So we got our pictures. A little bit of damages here and there. You got some bird poop on it and dirt and whatnot. Like little scratches here, like here and whatnot, all over the front bumper, missing a screw. But we got all that, we got all that written down. So let's get out of here. And I need to fix this at some point because this is chafing the cable. I don't like that. So I'm gonna move this to here. If you guys have a hook or something that you could send to me that I could purchase from Amazon or something, find me a hook that could go and bolt right into there and I'll switch it. Just gotta make make the order on that. So let's get out of here. Let's see how long it's gonna take to get there. Holy shit. That ain't good. Damn, get away from that. Oof. Smoky. My favorite part of the day, waiting for the fuel wire. And look at that, I can get a little bit of a discount in New Jersey, like 50 cent discount. Nice. Yeah, I think fire truck's coming for that uh, car that's like miles down the road. Hopefully everyone, I mean, it looked like everybody got out. Looks like everybody got out okay, but it's still... Oh. Spot opened up, I need to go get it, but you guys can see it back there. Well, minor mishap. I was wondering why she was smoking so much. I ended up cutting this because we don't need it now, and I pulled the string out so that it doesn't restrict it, but the bolt broke off. I have the bolt, but we don't... Uh, yeah, so I just put the springs back down on this. The turbo was sitting all the way open which was creating a healthy amount of lag. So I'm wondering if that's why it started feeling like that. I think sometime yesterday is when it started acting up. So now that that's fixed, I should get better mileage because I actually got worse mileage after adjusting the uh, pre-boost, but that's probably because I wasn't building any boost and it was just, it had to dump so much fuel just to do it. Oh, that is so much quieter. It was, it was so loud. Like it was, I was like, why is this thing so loud and smoky? And well, I know why now. Now it sounds like a jet again. 11.2 miles per gallon. Yeah, uh, I noticed it's the sound changed last night. So all day today, it's probably been like that, progressively getting worse or just like actually like that in general. Yeah, it was definitely laggy this morning and smoky. So now that that's fixed, we should get a lot better mileage. All right, made it here now. We're about to go in. Truck's doing great. I don't know. I don't know why. I haven't had any issues in a while. Um, check his fifth wheel. Yeah, it looks all right. So it, uh, I don't know, just one car, so quick, easy. Yeah, the reason I take this one was because it was 15 minutes from the house. I'm like right up the road. So easy, quick drop that is so stupid I, I really don't like that I mean, don't get me wrong the buttons feel pretty quality but I don't like that and the electronic e-brake and shit no wonder people have problems with these cars like whatever happened to a good old foot brake or I don't know. I don't get it but GMC Acadia I guess because it's luxury or terrain that's right, it's a terrain, it's luxury. Oh, there you go, all said and done. Boom, bada bing, bada boom, not a bad day. Uh, everything should be all right. Let's see, we got a little crooked, but whatever. We're on the little patch there. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna twist it a little bit, but uh, I might just leave it here, I don't know. All right, so as cool as it sounds running with the veins open, 
it's not very efficient. You guys can see what I did was I got rid of the bolt and I just hooked them through right there. Which, yes, the zip tie doesn't get hot. That's just holding the spring. What we're gonna do when I get the brand new one is I'll make a little perch for this spring in general and then a little piece that keeps the spring on this arm, which will get cleaned up eventually as well. I'm just waiting to try, once this turbo has to come off at some point, I'm gonna get this traced around for the guy that's gonna make me the new outer piece. So what I need to do right now is try to get those springs, like you can see, they're catching on this and they're scratching it. And that's why this isn't moving very well. So I need to take care of that real quick. It sounds cool, but it is not efficient at all whatsoever. So here it is. Basically I squeezed it and then cut the end so there's nowhere for this thing to go. Um, and I need to do the same thing to the other one. What's happening is, you can see it. Ugh, I wonder if you can see it. Um, so like, I need to squeeze that arm a little bit. It's ugly, but it works so well. So like I was saying, with this thing open, it does sound pretty cool. Now, we have them. I'm pretty sure there's clearance on the backside. That's what I want, so we should be able to move this freely. And then there's a spring right here that keeps it off of exhaust brake. Now, like I said, I'm gonna incorporate this into the new version, but I'm gonna keep testing this until I get time to get like a new one made. And I wanna make sure that when I do prototype two, that it's actually perfect because that's what I think. So we know we need a spring, so we need a perch. And then I'm also, before I make the nice one, I am going to start incorporating air for the exhaust brake, which will close this all the way, but it needs to have a lot of force, but also not restrict the exhaust pressure that it can't open. And so basically this opens with exhaust pressure and these springs keep it closed as far as possible. And then this keeps it off of exhaust brake. Uh, obviously this spring is compressible enough that it can be on exhaust brake. It is able to keep it off of exhaust brake with its own strength. I wish I would have done some sound clips with it open, but now we'll just have to, I'll just have to show you what it sounds like with it closed. Cause with it open, it sounds meaty. It sounds like beefy, like a, a normal Cummins. Now it just kind of sounds like JJ the jet truck, which, you know, sounds cool, but when you're in traffic and whatnot, it's nice to hear the engine. Like you can hear just how quiet the exhaust is. It's not very loud at all. Which, you know, it's nice for cruising and whatnot, but 12 valves are already quiet anyway, even with a five inch straight pipe. Super quiet, but if you open up the veins, it sounds very, very loud for what it is. All right, guys, always at the end of the video, feel free to hit the dislike button, feel free to unsubscribe, do what you do. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you wanna go check out my affiliate links down below in the description, you got Amazon, go buy something. I get a kickback of that. Also, it's all stuff that I use. So anything that I use that I like, I'm passing that on to you guys to say, hey, this is a good product, I stand behind it. And that list I made myself. So it's not like people paid me to put it out there. I made that list myself and I get a kickback from Amazon. Also got Coinbase, I do use Coinbase and we also have Mudflap down there. Uh, Mudflap I use when I can, but right now the cheapest I got is about six bucks a gallon. But if you're out in the Midwest, it's a lot better out there than it is here. So Mudflap used to be better than EFS, but EFS is what I've been using. I don't have a code for that, but EFS does kind of suck, so for what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next video. Safe travels. Don't do anything crazy. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.